Hi everybody, it's Michelle Grigsby here from OnlineWithMichelle.com and I have no idea if the quality of this live is going to be good or not because I have never gone live on my business page sharing my screen using the Facebook app. I usually use a third party software, so let's see how it goes. So what I'm gonna do really quickly in this is I'm gonna really quickly show you how to create a simple logo um, or, um, or just kind of a, a, a watermark so that you, and then I'm gonna do a, t a separate tutorial on how to add it to like an image to you know put your watermark on an image. So a watermark is, you know, whenever you go to, um, let me show you like my fan page here. When you go to, like when you look at images and you see, you know, a website or something in the bottom corner. Um, for instance, let me show you one that's on my fan page that I just posted today, just to give you an idea. Let me go to my fan page right there. And let's see, I posted a Zig Ziglar quote and I got it from his, from his uh, page. And so it's got his watermark on it. So there it is, and there's the watermark. That's his logo for his images, okay? So um, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you how to use PicMonkey. So I'm gonna go to picmonkey.com, and there's a very important aspect you need to do whenever you save your images so that it doesn't show the, the white background because that just looks tacky. Tacky, tacky, tacky. So what I'm gonna do is I am just going to hit design custom size, or I think blank canvas. Nope, I don't wanna do that because I don't wanna go to all those templates. Let me start over. Design custom size, I'm gonna leave it at 2000 by 2000 because the greater the pixels, the better quality it's gonna be. And then you could always reduce it later. You don't ever wanna take a small picture and make it bigger because it'll just make it fuzzy wuzzy, right? Right now, I am going to leave it with a white background. Or you know what, for now, just so that I have a point of reference, I'm gonna just add a little bit of color to it because I might also be doing a white, because I have some dark images too. So right now, I'm gonna change this later. But right now, I'm gonna use that as a reference. So pretty much what I'm gonna do, this is gonna be really simple, I'm gonna have a circle and then I'm gonna have my initials in it, and then I'm gonna have my website or my name. So I'm gonna click on the little uh, butterfly over here, and by the way, if you need to see this bigger, there should be like in the bottom corner, like the lower right hand, you can like click on that and it'll make it bigger if you need to do that. And so I'm clicking on the, um, this, I clicked on the little butterfly, go to geometric, and I just want a circle, so I'm gonna click on that. All right, so here's the circle. Let me go ahead and just make it bigger. All right, and first off, I'm going to do a, I've already done a dark circle, so I'm gonna do a white circle. I'm gonna do a white circle, and so I'm going to do that. I'm going to go over here, and I'm just gonna make that white. Oops. Over here, I'm gonna choose the white color. If I can click on it, all right. Now it's white. All right, I did that. And then inside that, I'm going to put my two initials, M, G. So I'm gonna go over here on text, and it's gonna give me different um, variations. And generally what they recommend is not more than two fonts, okay? So generally when you do initials, um, you could do, um, like a lot of people like to do like a basic initial or a basic name or basic word and then something else that's like an accent, okay? So I'm gonna start off with my first initial. Let's see what that looks like, okay? And I'm going to, I might just, you know what? For sake of this, I'm gonna have them both be the fancy schmancy. All right, I'm not too thrilled with that one. Let me go to Ranchero. Nope, don't like that either. I want one that's like, you know what? Actually, that's fine for sake of this. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna make this really, really big. Um, and if I need to make it bigger, then, and what I love about this is these are created in layers. If you look over here, it's in layers. And so I'm just, going to fill that up, right? 
and this is going to be my initials right and the thing is is you want to be consistent so that people will recognize it um, so I have used that this font before and then I'm gonna to go to my color history this is a little color Zilla is an awesome like an awesome extension for Chrome and I'm gonna to go to my history and pick my purple color that I use for my brand copy that go back to this change the color hit enter and it's purple Okay, so I've got my initials on a white back, a white circle in the background, and then um, I'm going to want to put my name. Let's do my name. So I'm going to do a basic font for that. Okay, so I'm going to just do, let me try just the basic, you know what, I'm going to do this one. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to hit add text. And at the bottom, I'm going to hit, now we're assuming that this is going to be on a dark image, right? So Michelle Grigsby. Okay, now check this out. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to change the color to my purple. All right, and there it is. Make it about the same width. And the thing, the difference between this and Canva, Canva.com will give you, like, it will tell you if it's lined up. This one you have to kind of eyeball it. <laughs> um, okay, so that is all right. Okay. Um, oh wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. This has to be white. I forgot. Sorry, white, because this is going on a dark image. Okay. Now, I'm going to see what else I can do with this. There's a curve that I could do. Let's see if I can curve that. Let's see. I don't know if I have to highlight it. But you can also curve it as an arc. Whoa. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. Let's see. Curvature. Oh, my gosh. This is so cool. Look at that, you guys. So you can like have it fit the circle, right? And okay, that's pretty cool. Um, what's the other one? Arc. The other one is a circle. Okay. Well, I like the arc better. So just for the fun of it, um, hmm. Or I could do it the other way, maybe. Let's see. If I do it the other way. Look at that. Okay. Oops. Um, go back to the effects. Curvature, not so much. Let's just see what that does. Let me move it down. Okay, so you can do that. Okay. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have it, though. I think I'm going to leave it as none. And uh, I'm going to leave it like that because... Um, I just want simple, you know, easy to read. And something you can do, though, is when you highlight this, you can actually go to the effects and you can have, um, if you look at this, look at the um, font here and watch this. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make a drop shadow and watch what happens. It makes a drop shadow. See how it does that? I think you can even do that with your um, image. I mean, with your, no, I don't want to do anything fancy with that. Um, but you can add like an outside. Wait, that's the main one. Let me go back. Goodness gracious. The outside one, um, see? So I could make that purple, but I'm just going to leave it white. Okay? And I'm, I am going to remove the overlay or the, um, excuse me, the drop shadow. I just wanted to show you that just for the fun of it. So let me remove that. So I just have a very simple... Um, you know, my initials make that just a little bit bigger because this could be pretty small because I might just put these like in the bottom corner of an image and okay, now here's the thing. When I save this, this is where the magic happens. Actually, 
you have to go to the backdrop. So I don't want this peach backdrop. I was just using that so I had a point of reference, right? But in order to have this image, when I when I paste this image or when I put this image, this logo on top of an image that's already created, um, I don't want it to have the white background or this peach background, okay? And if you save it as a regular um, JPEG, which I'm gonna show you in a second, it will show, it will have that. First thing you need to do is remove the background. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna click on these three lines and where it says canvas color, I'm gonna go back and see right here where it says transparent canvas. I'm gonna click on that and you can barely see it, right? But as you can see, it's got a transparent, when it's got these checkers, that means that it is a transparent background. That means whatever is behind this is going to show up, all right? So if it's a green image, it's going to be sitting on top of green and you'll see that the only thing you'll see is the white circle with what's inside and the white font or the white text. And that's what I want. I wanna save this as a transparent image. So I'm gonna click apply. And then I'm going to click export. And when I click export, I am going to, oh please don't be a delay. Let me do it again. Export. Come on. This is the fun part. I'm on my Wi-Fi, so hopefully it's going to work. All right, having trouble exporting your photo, download it. What does that do? Oh, I'm scared to do that. Uh, all right, but when I, right here, it's going to give me the option of saving it as a .png. It's gonna be a bigger file. It's gonna take up more space on your computer. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna upload it to my Dropbox account, which is um, a cloud. It's not on my computer. After I, let's see. I'm gonna paint of the rumple still skin. Um, so that is how you do it, guys. But the key that I wanted to show you was I wanted to show you that it was, I'm gonna make sure. Oh, hey, Chris. Yeah, Chris says I use Canva primarily, but I've always wanted to try PicMonkey too. That's awesome. Yeah, see, um, I think with the Canva, you actually have to use, um, you, have to, you have to be a paid member, I believe, to download a transparent background or to get a transparent background, but on PicMonkey, you don't have to. So, and the software I'm using um, is, um, for this, is actually called BeLive.TV, B-E-L-I-V, like Victor E.TV. And um, by the way, if you're not in my private group, Chris, um, request to join. Just go to uh, socialmediatipswithmichelle.com. It'll take you to my private group. It's free. And I'll be able to give you um, give you access to all those resources. So yeah, all right. So export. Let me go back again. All right, but the key is, and I wanted to show it to you, is it will ask you if you want to save it as a .jpg, and it has different levels. Like if you do the lowest quality, then it's going to be not as crisp and clear. And uh, you want to save it as a .png, which means it's transparent. It's got the transparent background, okay? So it's not saving it now. Um, maybe it's because I'm also recording my screen um, for a tutorial. So I will definitely edit this. And uh, once I'm done um, going live, I'll make sure that I save it. And then I'll be uploading this on my blog. But I thought since I'm doing this, I might as well go live on my fan page and show you um, just live, right? So I, there was gonna be any issues, you guys are gonna witness it. <laughs> so, um, okay, so that is how you create, um, that is how you create a logo, um, just a really simple logo, okay? And, um, and then of course, when you are gonna have a white image or a light colored image, you just wanna take these colors and just make this dark instead of, instead of a white or whatever, if you've got some branding colors, like I would make this purple and I would make the 
uh, initials, I would make those white and then I would make my name purple and then still keep a transparent background. And then in the next live I'm gonna do, um, which I might do just shortly, um, just because I'm doing it, so I might as well go live and show you. Um, I'll show you how to actually add that to an image, both on your phone and on your PC, okay? So with that, I will let you guys go. Thanks a lot, and if you got value, let me know. Thank you so much, Chris, I appreciate you. All right, here we go. I'm gonna end it. See ya, see